Hello everyone, and welcome to Autocrat, and this is episode 16, Lord of Troy. Ooh, I wonder what it's going to be about. It's a... Well, today we'll be dealing with the foundation of Troy and some of the people in the Trojan royal family. So you know that we've got the stories of the Iliad and the Odyssey coming up? Yes. Well, this is the start of all of that. This is Troy being founded and therefore a sort of prequel to that whole saga. All right. So, let's start our genealogy with Electra, and she is the daughter of Atlas, you know, brother of Prometheus and Epimetheus. Yep. remember that. Perfect. Well, she has two sons by Zeus. Which and... is not a surprise. No, this point is almost getting monotonous now, isn't it? He turns up in every family tree. Very true. Well, these children are Iasion, I hope I'm saying that right, it's I-A-S-I-O-N, and Dardanus. Iasion falls in love with Demeter and attempts to sleep with her, getting killed by being struck by lightning for his trouble. I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, it seems the lesson we've had over this episode and probably the last one is don't try anything with Greek goddesses, they don't appreciate it. Yeah, but killed by lightning, so did Zeus kill her then? I assume he did, which I, I'm hoping is just an overprotective brother rather than any other implications given that Persephone is also the daughter of Zeus and Demeter. Yay! <laughs> I will say, though, it's remarkable how often being struck by lightning comes up in Roman history and mythology. I can think of at least two other instances where it's going to pop up. So this is now number three. It's getting a bit weird. Yep. Anyway, this leaves Dardanus, who was understandably bereft because of his brother's death, and left his home, crossing the sea. He arrived in a country called Samothrace, and the king here was called Teucer, and he was the son of Scamander, who is one of the river deities, and Idaia. The Theogony, incidentally, tells us that Scamander was the son of Oceanus and Tethys, so again, we're linking it back to the Titans and sort of explaining why Scamander is a river deity. Teucer welcomed Dardanus with open arms, gave him a portion of his kingdom, and his daughter Batia as a bride, which seems like quite the starter pack to me. I mean, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a good welcoming package. Yeah, I'd love it if every time I moved somewhere new, someone just handed me a portion of their kingdom. Very true. I would love that too. Yeah. A city called Dardanus was founded by the man Dardanus, probably not very imaginative, and the region was called Dardania after Teusa died. So Teusa's dead, it passes presumably to Dardanus. I don't think the text was entirely clear on this point, but the region is now called Dardania. Dardanus and Batia were the parents of two sons, called Erichthonius and Illus. Seems like there was a lot more syllables and or effort put into the first name than the second one. Very true. Also, imagine that kid at school, Erichthonius. Eric for short, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's where the name Eric come from. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Probably not. I didn't look into the etymology of the name Eric. I didn't think that would be relevant. But yeah, let's say it is. So Illus, or Ilus, died without kids, and Erichthonius became king, marrying a woman called Astyache. These two were the parents of someone called Tros. Tros then became king when Erichthonius died, and renamed the region to Troy. Oh, as nice! We've, as we've seen before, there are individuals who have regions named after them, so this is where the region of Troy comes from, okay. the, prince, the king Tros. Tros married Caleroe, daughter of Scamander, and had three sons, Illus, or Illus II, I suppose, Asaracus, and Ganymede, and also a daughter, Cleopatra. Oh, very nice. We do know that name. We do know that name. It's going to come up more frequently in the next few centuries, but I was as surprised as you are to find out there's a Cleopatra in the family tree. We also know who Ganymede is. Yes, we do. He made a cameo as Aquarius back in our episode on the Zodiac. The long and short of this story is that Zeus thinks he's so pretty that he takes him on the back of an eagle up to Olympus to be his cupbearer. Continuing our little family tree here, Asaragus was the father of Capys, C-A-P-Y-S, who married Themisty and had a son called Anchises. Anchises is mainly relevant because he is the lover of Aphrodite and the father of Aeneas, who we'll be talking about a lot more when we get to the Trojan War. Anchises also had a brother called Lyrus, who has no kids, which is just to round out the family tree a little bit. But now, let's focus on Ilus the Younger, or Ilus the Second. Yep. He goes to a region called Phrygia while a young man, and takes part in a wrestling contest. In this contest, he won 50 young men and 50 young women, so he did quite well in it, this wrestling match. He did match. Do quite well. What is he going to do with those men and women? Though? I'm not sure. Maybe they just follow him around like a sort of cheerleading squad. Why not? The king of the region also followed an oracle's instructions and gave him a cow, specifically mentioned as Dappled, telling him to follow it and build a city wherever it lay. So this is essentially part of his prize for winning this contest. Okay. 
The cow lay down by a hill called Phrygian Arte. Ilus founded a city there, calling it Ilium. Now, does that name mean anything to you, Ilium? It does remind me of the Iliad, maybe. Yes. Yes, well, Ilium is another name for the city of Troy. So we now have it actually existing on the world stage. The first piece has been put down in the puzzle of the Trojan War. Okay. Ilus sent up a prayer to Zeus for a sort of signal, presumably for divine blessing, and received something called the Palladium. Now, you might be wondering what this is, because we haven't mentioned it before. I am. However, this thing has quite an extensive backstory that we're going to get into now. Okay. For this, we have to talk about Athena a little bit. It might seem counterintuitive at first, but hold on to your hats, we'll get there. I'm sure we will. Athena was raised by Triton, a son of Poseidon and Amphitrite, after she was born. Triton had a daughter called Pallas, presumably the one who accompanied Persephone back in episode 12. Yes. Athena and Pallas used to practice fighting together, but at one point they had a falling out. Zeus intervened when Athena was about to be hit by Pallas, the long and short of it being that Pallas got struck by Athena. Basically, Zeus distracts Pallas' attention, and therefore Athena accidentally impales her. Which, I'm not sure how you can accidentally do that, but hey. Oh, oh, I, I, I had to spare in my hand and it just went into you. Yeah, should Vlad the Impaler actually be called Vlad the Very Clumsy? <laughs> Regardless, Athena was sorrowful and made a likeness out of wood, either of herself or of Pallas, I've seen different versions here, and this is the Palladium, and supposedly the thing that Pallas had been afraid of, which used to distract her, something called the Aegis, was wrapped round it. Electra, who we mentioned at the start of our genealogy, would later take refuge next to the Palladium when she was being attacked, presumably by Zeus if I understand how these things work, because, well, he does have kids by Electra, and, well, that would fit with the fact that she's being attacked by someone. Very true. Zeus then threw it down to the earth, and that's how Illus ended up with it. So it's probably maybe not the best token to receive, a byproduct of a god presumably throwing something to the ground to stop a goddess being protected by it, but hey, it's something. It is. Ilus was blinded at this point because it wasn't meant for humans to gaze upon the Palladium, a bit like the idea of a god's true form or appearing in all their glory, which we talked about in episode 11, right? Very true. However, Athena later restored his vision. Very nice of her. Yeah, very nice of her. I mean, she is involved with the whole story of the Palladium, so maybe she just felt bad. Very true. Ilus placed the Palladium in a temple to Zeus in gratitude for Zeus's blessing for the city to be built. Now, this Palladium was a figure that protected Troy, and subsequently Rome. Why? Well, Odysseus and Diomedes, two characters from the Iliad, would make off with it after Troy fell. Aeneas would ultimately take it to where Rome would one day be, as told in the Aeneid. In this version of events, Diomedes took a fake one from Troy, and Aeneas had the real one, but given that the Aeneid was written by a Roman source, it's, it's very convenient that the Greeks end up with a fake one, and Aeneas has the actual real one, don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, it. it's a bit convenient. Yeah, maybe there was more than one. Maybe there was more than one, maybe they'd actually separated in two and shared, like maybe. good people who share stuff. Sort of like the Greece-Troy divorce settlement, we each get <laughs> half the Palladium. <laughs> Now, there was a real object thought to be the Palladium, which the Vestal Virgins looked after for centuries. So these are attendants of the goddess Vesta, who keep the sacred fires burning and make sure that it stays burning constantly. Yep. The rumour mill has it that Constantine moved it to Constantinople and placed it under his forum, as a sign that his rule and city were legitimate, and to erode Rome's place as the dominant city. So, in this version of events, the Palladium is real, and presumably, if you were to dig up part of Istanbul today, which, you know, don't do that, you would find the real Palladium. Let's do that. What did I just say? You said, let's do that. Ah, <sighs> moving on. <laughs> just to round out Ilus' story, he wed a woman called Eurydice. Their child was Laomedon, who married yet another daughter of Scamander, like Zeus, he's inserting himself into this tree everywhere, but as a father-in-law rather than as a spouse and this daughter was called Strymo. Tithonus is also mentioned as a son of Ilus II, but the parentage is a little bit iffy in terms of who the mother is. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. For those who don't know who Tithonus is, he was the lover of the Dawn, or Aeos, who took him to Ethiopia and had two sons with him, Memnon and Amathion. I stumbled across him for the first time in a TED-Ed video, where a story was told that Aeos asked Zeus to make her lover immortal. Okay. And Zeus granted this request, but with a very cruel technicality that she didn't ask him for eternal youth. So <laughs> Tithonus just forever kept aging without actually being able to die. That's nice. 
yeah. Well, it's, it's not nice, but oh, it's, it's pretty it's, horrifying. It's funny. Yeah, pretty horrifying, but a nice technicality, I suppose. <laughs> Seems unnecessarily pedantic, though. Anyway, book three, section 12 of Apollodorus' library, which is where most of this information comes from, then goes on to talk about Heracles sacking Troy, which I assume we'll get into in a few episodes' time. Yes, we will. It's another piece of the Trojan War puzzle. Through his son Laomedon, Ilus II is the grandfather of Priam, who will be king of Troy during the Trojan War. So again, another one of the pieces is slotting into place, and as we said, through his daughter Themiste, he is the grandfather of Anchises. So, Capes was the one married to Themiste and was a relative of Ilus, but his daughter Themiste is now married to Capis and they have Anchises. There is a little bit of uncertainty in the family tree, because of course there is, it can never just be simple, and my compilation source, Guerrero, just skips Ilus altogether and says that Dardanus was the father of both Lamadon and Themiste. But for our purposes, we're going with the original family tree. Good. Now, Ilus was buried in the plain that he settled, and his burial place is actually mentioned during the course of the Iliad. While... Who is it? In passing, at least, as far as I can tell. While the wall of Ilus is mentioned in passing by Pindar. So another one of our sources about mythological times. However, Ilus didn't actually found Troy where it wound up being during the time of a geographer we have as a later source called Strabo. I didn't know. No. The site of the original founding was called something akin to the Ilian village by Strabo, and he said that he founded it at a higher altitude and further eastwards than the modern site, and it was closer to Dardania, founded by Dardanus, and Mount Ida. So Troy's actually moved over the years. It seems that the city shifted location a few times before coming to rest in its final site during the years of King Croesus. The plain where Ilus is buried is at the confluence of the Scamander and Simoeus rivers close to Troy. So all of this comes to us courtesy of Strabo, and if you haven't heard that name before, he wrote a gigantic geography of what I imagine is the known world at the time, I've only read bits of it, and essentially just stops every five seconds to say how interesting something is. Well, everything is interesting. Yeah, Strabo is my spirit animal. That that would make sense. Yeah. You stop every five seconds to tell me about something that you found interesting. Yeah, well, it's the reason we're doing this podcast. I'm just telling you fun things that happen. And I'm loving it. Yeah. <laughs> the main takeaway here is that Troy didn't actually have a settled location or a final location, according to Strabo, until sometime during the reign of King Croesus, who reigned from about 560 to about 546 BCE. So, over the centuries, it's moved about quite a bit. Alright. So, that covers our founding of Troy. We have now finally started to move towards the Trojan War. We'll get there piecemeal over time. But, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and thank you all for listening. Yeah, thank you. Don't forget you can reach us at the show's email address, and, yeah, have a good week, everyone. Have a great week. So, was the founding of Troy as crazy as you thought it was going to be? It's quite of crazy. I am yeah, Troy is sort of mentioned in the